Good morning. It is Wednesday, September 12, 2018. And 63 degrees. It's kind of chilly. Um, there's a, it's warm, but because there's a chill in the air, it's not warm. So, um, but it is September here in Maine, so that's to be expected. Um, so let's see. No gym yesterday. Um, it was, and I know this is an excuse, but it really isn't. So I forgot a shirt to wear. I only had the sweatshirt that I was wearing to work yesterday. And I learned that I was going to go to the gym. Even though I had that, I was just going to go and wear that. Or I was going to go to Jason Penny and buy a, 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 a t-shirt for really cheap to work out in. And then I realized that I did not bring my gym sneakers. And because it was downpouring when I stepped into the um the when I stepped into the into the building my slip my shoes were really slippery and so I did not want to go on a treadmill or on the elliptical with slippery shoes and fall and crack my ass. So I did not go to the gym yesterday. And I probably could have and maybe I wouldn't have fallen but I didn't want to take that chance. So I'm going to the gym today. Um Again, I forgot my damn gym sneakers, but it's not supposed to be rainy, so I should be good. Um, so, let's see. What's going on? Um, so, we touched Nicki Minaj the other day. We touched the Eminem. So, now there's this thing going on, continuing going on, where I believe it was in Washington. I might be misspeaking. I don't know, but um, sorry. Um, yeah, this lady, because she was an off-duty police officer, so the fact that she was a police officer doesn't even matter yet. Let, let me get to that. So this lady gets home from work and is really, really tired, and she enters and she, she has a hard time entering into this apartment and uh, her key's not working. She's finally able to open the door and there's a black man standing in front of her. She tells him to get down to the ground. He absolutely refuses, saying what's going on, what's going on and she shoots and kills him. Come to find out it's not her apartment. It's his. So they so they arrest her three days later and then they let her out on bail now okay so it was a mistake okay so we're, we're gonna cross that off that we understand and we, we recognize that it was a horrible mistake we're gonna cross that off but so let's point out some some blatant facts she's a white lady He's a black man. So, do I think race had an issue? Yes and no. Do I think she shot him because he's a black man? Yes. Because she was under the impression that she was in her apartment. So, she's thinking a black man is in my apartment. Okay? Would she have shot him if he was a white man? Most likely not. So, here is what really causes a problem with all of this. So she will put aside that she's a police officer. So if she's just a regular, because at this point she's just a regular closed 
clothed citizen. She is no longer on duty. Therefore, her whatever it is, her active duty policism is clocked out. So you're a regular U.S. citizen at this point. So that means that I come home from work from a really long day, really, really tired. And I go into this, I go to this door and try to open it. My key's not working. The door's open a little bit, so I open it up, which doesn't make any sense, but we'll leave that there. And I shoot my neighbor. It's a horrible accident, okay? It's a horrible accident. Am I justified? Absolutely not. Would I be booked three days later? No, I would have been arrested on the scene. Would I have been put out, let out on bail? Absolutely not. I would have remained in custody. Unless I was rich, mind you. Then then I would be let out on bail. But she's not rich. So now the problem that I have with this situation is her gun. So the gun is an issue gun from work so does that give you the right to pull it out whenever you feel scared if I'm given a vehicle at work I'm only for work I'm only allowed to use that vehicle when I'm clocked in I'm not able to, I'm not allowed to use that vehicle whenever I feel like it so why do police get to use their guns whenever they feel like it why do police get to use their, their, their authority whenever it deems them appropriate. Now, I do understand that there is a good Samaritan law in effect. And I do understand that police, firefighters, and EMTs are actually more obligated to help in a distress situation than the average citizen. However, However, it does not mean that they have to because they are liable to be sued if something goes wrong. So let me explain. There's a good Samaritan law. However, if you feel that you being a good Samaritan could subject you to liability, you do not have to be a good Samaritan. So, the same goes for EMTs, police, and firemen. Okay? Now, that, that's a legal law, national. It's precedent. It's out there. I don't remember the name of the case, but it's precedent. It's out there. So, a police officer could be off duty in a bank, and the bank is being robbed, and he is not obligated to step up and try to disarm or, or fix or... or apprehend or anything the robber because he could potentially be sued if something goes wrong and somebody's murdered or something happens somebody has a heart attack or whatever it may be he potentially can be sued so because of that he does not have to act on his police policism i know that's not a word but i'm just so why are we only doing 40 when the fucking speed limit is 45? So these are things that need to be really questioned is why? Why was she why did she feel that she was allowed to use her gun off duty? And why does she feel that her policism carried on after being off duty? Just because you're a policeman, when you're punched in, when you are punched out, 
you're not. And just because you tell somebody to get to the grounds does not mean that they have to do it. You're no longer a police officer. You're now a regular American citizen. So why do they have to do that? Now, I do get she thought she was in her apartment. I do get that. And like I said, it was, you know, but absolutely not. And this is what fries my ass about this. If it was any American citizen, they would have been detained at the scene, processed and prosecuted immediately, and not on our bail. That is straight facts. So, yeah. Now, let's take it and go the reverse way. Let's say he, because he wasn't even a criminal, he was a pastor or a minister or something, and well-known in the community and, and all kinds of stuff. Let's take it the other way. Let's say he came back from a flight, from a long, busy weekend, and he was exhausted because of this flight. And he shot and killed her. The country would be in an uproar. Uproar. And then it would be black man murdered cop. Just, you know. So, I just, like, want to, I, I just, I, I think we have some several issues here and um the most blatant issue is the fact that she feels the need that because she's off duty she still can use her policism as um as a way of of benefiting her and uh it doesn't work that way and you should not be allowed to use your police firearm if you have your own personal firearm, that's so be it. But you should not be able to use your police firearm whenever you feel like it. Like, it should not. It should, that should only be used during work time. Just like a vehicle, just like anything else, you know, like it should be just during work time. It should not be outside of So you should check it in at the building and check it out at the end of the day. You know, like, I don't know. Anyway, so that's what's not making the news right now. Um, kind of, sort of, it's a blip on the radar. Really, what's making the news is Trump and his stupid comments that this hurricane thing is really wet. It's a fucking hurricane, dude. Did you think it was going to be dry? <laughs> but I guess everybody makes stupid comments every now and then. Um, so, yeah. So And then, like, there's going to be more tariffs with China. We're, like, doing tit for tat right now. And, um, again, I have no idea about any of that stuff. I've touched on this before. I don't know anything about it. So, if it means that it makes us a little bit more in the market to have American made items. Um, then so be it. But the problem is, is I don't see American made items prices going down. I see American made items prices going up along with non-American made items. That's what I see. Because Americans are greedy. American countries are greedy. And so they know that if they can make, if they have to make the product in America, and Americans really like the product, Americans are going to spend whatever it is to take to get that product. And so if that means that they have to up their prices a little bit more, so be it. Yeah, so that's how I see that happening. 
Um, <laughs> nothing else really. I really need to learn how to cook for two though. Uh, yesterday I made hot dogs and beans for dinner. And you know, at one point I was cooking, I, I, you know, years ago it was, I was cooking for four. Then I was cooking for six to eight. You know, depending. Then I went back down to cooking to, for four, four, four to six, depending on what family member came over. And then it went to three, to cooking to for three. And uh, now it's cooking for two. And the problem is, even when I was cooking for three, I was still really cooking for five or four, or really five. Because Michael would eat two or three pieces of whatever it was that I was making. So I still was cooking for, you know, four or five. Now I'm literally cooking for two. Literally. Like, you know. <laughs> so how do you go? How do you adjust to that? It's so hard because even like planning and getting stuff together like when I went to the grocery store yesterday I bought the package of hot dogs and I could have easily bought a smaller can of beans instead of about the big one and I didn't even eat a whole lot I had maybe a half a cup of beans so I literally have a whole can of beans sitting in my refrigerator right now yeah so tonight I'm ha and, and I have hot dogs in the freezer so tonight I'm going to have hot dogs and beans for dinner again. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's my problem. Um, so I have to adjust to that empty nest thing. So, you know, when I say the best investment you can make is an investment in you, what are you investing in you today? Um, well, today I'm going to invest in making the wreath. <laughs> I was ordered, excuse me, one, uh, the supplies came in yesterday, so I'm going to go through, check to see what I need, what I've got, and uh, I'm going to be, uh, I'm just going to start making it. I have to get ready, I have to get for the craft fair at the end of the month, I have a couple of things I have to buy, I have to buy a canopy, and I have to buy another table, and um, I have to make, I have to print out pictures of all the stuff that I make, so that way I can put it in a binder. Um, I thought about making like a hardcover book, but then I just have to keep making those books. So I'm just going to get a binder and put pictures in it and make my portfolio that way. Um, so yeah, th that's where I am at with that. So, um, and so today I'm going to look at ordering those pictures. And I think I'm going to do five by sevens. So, you know what I say, the best investment you can uh, make is an investment in you. What are you investing in you today? I'm in investing in um, making the wreath that was ordered. That's what I'm investing in. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm going to go to the gym today. I'm behind in school, so I have to go um, catch to go and listen to catch up because I am behind in school. Because that's what I was doing to school videos was when I was at the gym on the treadmill and the elliptical. So I have to catch up on that. Um, cause I'm, I'm behind my like two, two modules. So you guys have a wonderful day and I will check in with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.